And we are back with part three of the uploaded segment of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA for Saturday, March 20th, 2021. And on the Hebrew calendar, Nisan 7, 5781. We are now at the half Torah portion and we are going to continue with Isaiah going into Isaiah chapter 44. No profit in casting idols. But now listen, Jacob, my servant Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says Adonai, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Do not fear, Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. This one will say, I am Adonai. That one will be called by the name Jacob. Another will write on his hand, Adonai, and will take the name Israel first and last. Thus says Adonai, Israel's king and his redeemer, Adonai Sevaot, I am the first and the last. and There is no God beside me who is like me. Let him proclaim and announce it. Let him arrange it in order for me. As I establish the ancient nation, let them declare to them what is coming and future events. Do not dread or be afraid. Have I not told you and declared it long ago? So you are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? Is there any rock I know of? Folly of idols. Those who fashion idols are empty. Their precious things do not profit. Their witnesses do not see or know, so they will be put to shame. Who fashions a god or casts an idol for no profit? Behold, all his friends will be ashamed. The craftsmen are only human. Let them all assemble. Let them stand up. Let them dread. Let them be put to shame together. The blacksmith takes a tool and works with it over the coals, fashioning it with hammers and working it with his strong arm. Yet when he is hungry, His strength fails. When he drinks no water, he gets tired. A carpenter stretches out a line. He marks it with a pencil. He shapes it with planes. He marks it with a compass. He shapes it like the figure of a man, like the beauty of a man, so that it may sit in a shrine. He chops down cedars for himself, or he takes a cypress or an oak. He lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a pine and rain nourishes it. Then it is something for a man to burn. So he takes one of them and warms himself. He also makes a fire to bake bread. He also makes a god and worships it. He makes an idol and bows before it. He turns half of it in the fire. With this half he eats meat. He roasts roast and is satisfied. He also warms himself and says, Uh, I am warm, I have seen the fire. Yet, with the rest, he makes a god, he carved his carved image. He falls down before it and worships, even prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my god. They do not know or understand, for he smeared over their eyes so they cannot see, and their hearts so they cannot understand. No one reflects in his heart with no knowledge or discernment to say, I burned half of it in the fire, and I also baked bread on its coals. I roasted meat and ate, and then I made make the rest of it an abomination. Should I bow before a block of wood? He is feeding on ashes. A deceived heart has led him astray, so he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Isn't what is in my right hand a fraud? Remember these things, Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I formed you. You are my servant, Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I blotted out your transgressions like a thick cloud and your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heaven, for Adonai has done it. Shout depths of the earth. Break forth into singing mountains, forest, and every tree in it. For Adonai has redeemed Jacob and will be glorified through Israel. Thus says Adonai, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb, I am I am Adonai, maker of all things, stretching out the heavens alone. 
spreading the earth abroad by myself, causing the omens of boasters to fail, making fools of diviners, turning wise men backward, and making their knowledge foolish, while confirming the word of his servant, fulfilling the counsel of his messengers, saying of Jerusalem, she will be lived in, and of the cities of Judah, they will be built, and I will raise up their ruin, while saying to the deep, be dry, I will dry up your rivers, while saying of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall fulfill all my purpose, while saying to Jerusalem, you will be built, and to the temple, your foundation will be laid. And that is the end of the half Torah portion. So I'm going to do a recapping of both the Torah and the half Torah at this point before we actually uh, close out and take a break. Um, again, uh, the Torah portion um, in Leviticus 1 through 5. Adonai calls to Moses from the tent of meeting and communicates to him the laws of sacrifice, uh, the animal and meal offerings brought in the sanctuary, and these include the burnt offerings, also known as ascending offering or Ola, that is wholly raised to Adonai by the fire atop of the altar, five varieties of meal offerings or minka prepared with fine flour, oil, olive oil, and frankincense, the shalom offering or the peace offering whose meat was eaten by the one bringing the offering after parts are burnt on the altar and parts are given to the priest, the kohanim, and the different types of sin offering brought to atone for transgressions committed erroneously by the high priest, the entire community, the king, or the ordinary uh, person. Um, the guilt offering brought by one who has misappropriated property of the sanctuary, who is in doubt as to whether he transgressed a divine prohib prohibition, or who has committed a betrayal against that and I by swearing falsely to defraud a fellow man. So these were offerings that we have read. Now, when we talk about the half Torah, um, this week starts with a rebuke to uh, the children of Israel for abandoning the temple sacrificial service uh, and sacrifices were the dominant topic of this week's Torah reading too. So they kind of coincide. And, and as time went on, uh, Benaiah Israel were, had kind of turned to idolatry um, and and we're kind of mixing uh, paganistic worship as well, which was not what they were supposed to do. And the prophet Isaiah rebukes Benaiah Israel for turning away from God and refraining from offering sacrifices, turning to idolatry instead. Adonai exhorts the people to return to him, promising to forgive their transgressions. Um, and the prophet Isaiah also mentions the futility of serving empty idols which may be crafted by uh, artisans and human hands, and they neither see nor hear nor they know anything, versus a living true God, uh, which is our creator who formed us in the womb and knows everything about us. Um, so the half Torah concludes with, um, with Adonai's saying to always remember him and to return to him um, and he will forgive the transgressions. So as we see, you know, there is consequences to sin. You just can't go on sinning and sinning and not atone for them. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're going to be lost. Um, so what was in place was the sacrificial system was in place. And we're, we're delving into that in the, in the Torah. Um, but as we know, in the Brit Kadashah, the most ultimate sacrifice was our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, who gave everything for us. And he was sinless and blameless and spotless. So when we're looking at um, the ancient times where the animal sacrifices um, were, were put in place, they had to be without blemish. They had to be perfect. So that's kind of a type and shadow of what was to come when Yeshua laid his life down. And we're going to do an altar call um, in, this, in, in the 
second in the second portion after the break, um, after we do the Brit Kadasha. So um, what we're going to do now is do a closing prayer for the first segment here. Uh, take a break and come back. And we're going to do um, the Brit Kadasha and altar call. And then we're going to close out Shabbat service for this week. And um, so we're going to close this segment with prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the parallels that are seen in both the Torah and the half Torah. You know how, how you wanted things to, to take place with, and you were laying everything out foundationally um, for Moses to teach the people uh, of the sacrificial system. However, when we fast forward into the days of Isaiah, um, B'nai Israel had kind of abandoned what you had laid down as the foundation. And you had been crystal clear um, that you did not want your people to worship idols and, and, and mix and mingle with the pagan uh, practices that were around them. And we see what happened to the people when they did these things. And the idols they worshipped were nothing like you, Father God. You, There's no one like you. You are awesome. You're an amazing God. You're the creator of all things. So no one can compare to you. You created everything. And we're in awe of you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for allowing us to become part of your family through Yeshua. It is such an honor, and it is so humbling to stand before you, to be in your presence, because you are the most awesome, awesome God of all. You're the, you are the true living God, the only God, and absolutely there is no one like you. And we thank you for all that you have done past, present, and what you're about to do in the future. We love you, Father God. We worship you. We adore you. We praise you. And we lift your name high. There is no one like you. Thankfully so. We thank you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. Take a quick break and we'll come back and we will begin the Brit Kadashah um, after the break. 